Uh, certainly, one work uh, that I think is very important, uh, written in 1967, a novel called Bolt by Kenneth Gangeri. Uh, 60 pages, it's a novel, it's meticulous, it's about this obsessive character, Robert Bolt, and there's just something so spare about it. Yet, I, I, I've got to know Kenneth Gangeri. I was 11 years old when Bolt was written, I met him about 20 years after. And I know that this man toils for years to get a 60-page book. I mean, he starts here and works down here. Uh, there's another very obscure work I, I could name that was published by Wonderful Press, something else press, you may be familiar with it as uh, Dick Higgins, the Fluxus artist that published. And, a writer, uh, not really a writer, a visual artist named Toby McLennan, who uh, was somehow connected with the Fluxus people, was at Rutgers for years, did this amazing book of short, short, a sequence of short, short pieces called One Walked Out of Two and Forgot It. Uh, you can find used copies online, not too expensive, and I would recommend that to anybody who, after hearing what I'm doing, wants to hear other people who are doing similar things. So uh, for me, it somewhere around 1980, I started working on a series that's in this book, because this is kind of a, both a retrospective and new work. Uh, I started a series called Bagatelles, which was originally published as a chapbook. And that, for me, was the beginning of the minimalist sequences. Uh, I actually was interested in trying to come up with a prose that was as much related to visual art and music in certain ways. So I was using Mondrian as a model. I wanted to come up with a kind of geometric analog in prose. And then I called it Bagatelles because Webern's Six Bagatelles for String Quartet, which is very spare. I think it's six pieces, runs totally under, under six minutes, and there's more silence than notes in it. Uh, that was a big influence on me. So that's, that's where some of this went. Um, before you started writing this kind of work, were, were you writing other stories? More traditional short stories. I started in college. I studied playwriting with Jack Elver for the next year. Uh, and so my original intent was to become a playwright. I wrote a short story in 1976. And I think it's because it was published by a very prestigious place, Transatlantic Review, when I was 21 years old, that convinced me this might be the direction I wanted to go. And then it took me at least 10 more years before I could get in any place as prestigious as Transatlantic Review. So I was writing, they weren't traditional stories, they were you know, what we would have called experimental fiction back then. Uh, you know, the, the heroes back then were Donald Barth, me, Joseph McElroy, John Barth. Uh, Metafiction, self-reflexive stuff, but I was writing longer pieces, and I, I continued somewhat. But for me, the real spare, crystallized uh, language was the core of what I do, even if I do stuff around it, which includes performance and music too. Well, before they really came up with the label, uh, I mean, I can see why they would want to label it prose poems because you have the same the same problem or challenge as a poet, which is to delimit what you want to say. But you have to know what to leave in, what to take out, and when to end it. And you have to weight your words much more heavily than somebody that can write a 300 page novel. Oh, I, I, I always tell people that writing short, short stuff is like a short flight. The takeoff and the landing takes as long as the actual flight. It's the concept, it's coming up with an, uh, and here's a chance for a plug, because every time I write a sequence like Bagatelle's Dirty Windows, Mr. Deadman in this book, I write many more pieces that are actually complete subsets that I don't use in the book, uh, in the sequence. And I realized I had so many of these, over 40 pieces, that Mark Evans, my publisher here, I said to Mark, I said, why don't we do an e-book of outtakes, like uh, outtakes on CDs of jazz recordings, you know, uh, alternate takes, a tune that didn't make it. Uh, 
the a piece became an outtake not necessarily because it wasn't up to snuff. Maybe the tone didn't fit the rest. Maybe the arc of the series would have been upset by a certain piece being in it. Maybe another piece I wrote was just too similar to one, and in that sequence it wouldn't have stood out. So now we have this 99 cent ebook called Outtakes from Lift Your Right Arm on Amazon for Kindle that's kind of a companion to this book. Right. And, well, that's my last question. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you, Keith. <clears throat> well, that wasn't expected. Something else wasn't expected, so I'm going to sort of break 